Good morning. Good to be with you today as we continue in our study of Ecclesiastes. Today we're going to be in the fourth chapter, beginning in the 13th verse. And this is a, a section of Scripture where Solomon continues his teaching. Uh, it feels like to me that there might be a group of, of people there that are listening to Solomon. Uh, the topic of today's les lesson is listen. Listen to God. And in this uh, section of Scripture, Solomon addresses three topics. The first is the frailty, if you will, of political power. The second is conduct and worship or being respectful in worship. And the third uh, section is, uh, is entitled making a vow or how to make a vow or when to make a vow. So today I want to uh, begin in the 13th uh, verse of this chapter. And it says, Better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to take warning uh, or does not listen to advice anymore. Uh, so we see here a king that is experienced. Uh, he's gotten to a point where he doesn't listen anymore. And Solomon is saying better to have a young man that is wise than an old foolish king. At that time, of course, age was associated with wisdom, but obviously this king had gone past that point and was not listening anymore. It says the youth may have come from prison to the kingship, or he may have been born in poverty within his kingdom. I uh, saw that all who lived and walked under the sun followed the youth, the king's successor. So we're, we're seeing here the struggle between uh, tradition, if you will, and, and revolution. There was no end to all the people who were before them, but those who came later were not pleased with the successor. This, too, is meaningless in chasing after the wind. So let's unpack this a little bit and see where we are. You might recognize it uh, as uh, the story of Joseph, and it's very similar to the struggles of Joseph, and it could well be that this was what Sol uh, Solomon was referencing because, in fact, uh, Joseph we don't think came out of poverty, but he was thrown into a pit by his brothers. He was sold into slavery in Egypt, and he ascended in Egypt to a very high position with Pharaoh. Uh, Pharaoh's wife accused him of uh, trying to sleep with her, and, and so uh, Joseph was thrown in jail again only to come back and rise to, the, uh, to be second in command in Egypt. So we see here a young man who, despite setbacks, despite uh, troubles, uh, despite imprisonment, rose to this great height of being second in command in Egypt. Well, then, of course, uh, it says in verse 15, I saw that all who lived and walked under the sun followed the youth, the king's successor. And this could well mean the people that preceded, the kings that preceded Pharaoh. There were many that came before him and, of course, uh, many after. But after Pharaoh died, uh, his successor uh, wasn't familiar with Joseph, and as you recall the story, he began to uh, take advantage of and to uh, oppress uh, Joseph's people. And so they were not happy. Uh, they were not pleased, as the word says, with the successor. Uh, 
very well could be uh, the the successor to Pharaoh. As I said, the, the story here in Ecclesiastes has, has a great similarity to the story of Joseph. And then it says in the final sentence, this too is meaningless, chasing after the wind. So what is the application of that, I wonder, to uh, you and I living in the in the presence of Jesus under his uh, authority. Well, I, I believe it says that, that ascension to, to a high position without God is meaningless. Trying to accomplish things in life without God's guidance is meaningless. So here, as we have seen in these first verses between 13 and 16, is the frailty of political power. And then in the fifth chapter, uh, Solomon begins to teach, to instruct in the area of worship. And he says, beginning in 5.1, guard your steps when you go to the house of God. God is worthy of worship. Think about your actions. Think about where you're going and why you're going. Come quietly before the Lord. Guard your steps. And then in the second part of that verse, it says, Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of fools who do not know that they do wrong. Uh, the sacrifice of fools would be a foolish, empty worship. It's, it's uh, in our day, would be to come to church and read emails. Uh, it would be empty. It would not be in the presence of God, listening to God and praising God in worship. It is an empty worship, a foolish worship. God is to be praised, and we come to church for the purpose of listening to God's message for us. We come to praise because He is God. And that second verse, it says, Do not be quick with your mouth. Do not be hasty in your heart to utter anything before God. It's very interesting, as we've sometimes been told in a joking way, that God gave us two ears and one mouth, and we should recognize the importance of listening to God as opposed to telling God. If we look in Matthew in the in the twelfth uh, uh, chapter of that. Uh, book in the 36th, uh, let me see, in the, uh, in the 36th verse of that 12th chapter, it says, but I tell you that men will have to give account to the day of judgment for every careless word they have spoken. For every careless word they have spoken, for your words you will be acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned. Also in Proverbs, in the uh, 10th chapter, in the 19th verse, uh, the writer of Proverbs says, When words are many, sin is not absent, but he who holds his tongue is wise. So, in this section of Scripture, in this fifth chapter, uh, Solomon is cautioning us about our style of worship, about how we worship. Do not be quick with your mouth, he says. He's talking about the relationship between God and people. And he says in the second half of that verse, God is in heaven and you are on earth, so let your words be few. God is in heaven, 
and you are on earth, so let your words be few. So we are being told here by Solomon how to approach God, that, that we shouldn't, it seems, come to God with lots of words and, and lots of flowery speech and lengthy prayers, but to humbly approach God in prayer and listening to God for his word through the message, uh, through Bible study, through whatever means we might get counseling through a trusted friend and mentor. God is in heaven and you are on earth. Psalm is saying, don't ever forget that. God is in heaven. We are the created. We are the creatures. God is in heaven. And in verse 3, as a dream comes when there are many cares, so the speech of a fool when there are many words. I know that, that you have read and heard stories as I have read and heard that people that have a lot of stuff worry about it. We've seen in Solomon about uh, his concerns about his stuff and how to keep it. Uh, the worries and the problems that accompany possessions are many. And as Solomon's indicating here, it will cause you to have dreams, have nightmares about your stuff and the problems with it, uh, uh, tenants that don't pay rent, stocks that don't go up, the myriad of things that trouble us uh, when we have a lot of stuff. As a dream comes when there are many cares, so the speech of a fool when there are many words. So I think that Solomon is telling us here that when we uh, come to worship that we come quietly and respectfully and that we listen for God's message to us while we are in the house of worship, when we are in church. And then in verse 4 of this fifth chapter, Solomon changes topics again. We talked about, uh, about the political frailty, uh, the frailty of political power. We've talked about now about our attitude or our mindset when we come to church. And now Solomon directs our attention to making vows. And he says in 5.4, when you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. If you make a promise, and I think this ties into what we just read about attendance in church, if God gives you a message and you say, okay, God, I'm going to do that. I'm going to go and I'm going to serve at the Hope Center. I'm going to go uh, visit someone that's sick in a hospital. When you make a vow to God, do not delay in fulfilling it. He has no pleasure in fools. Fulfill your vow. Failure is lying to God. It is better not to make a vow than to make a vow and not fulfill it. So if you say you're going to do something, uh, if you swear to God, well, I'm going to do this, then Solomon is saying here, do it and do it quickly. And then in verse 6, uh, Solomon writes, do not let your mouth lead you into sin. In Proverbs, it says, the mouth of the wicked gushes evil, gushes evil. Do not let your mouth lead you into sin. Do not protest to the temple messenger. That could be one of the rabbis there. It could be an angel of God. It's not told to us uh, who this messenger is, but don't go up to him and say, you know, I made a mistake when I said I would do this. I, you know, I wasn't really sincere and it was a mistake. And, you know, I, God, I'd like to 
I'd like to bow out of that. Why should God be angry at what you say and destroy the work of your hands? Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Much dreaming and many words are meaningless. Therefore, stand in awe of God. Stand in awe of God. He is in heaven. We are on earth. We are the created. He is the creator. Therefore, stand in awe of God. And friends, as we go about our daily walk, as we uh, meet friends, as we visit the sick, as we do the things uh, that are a part of our ministry, I pray, Father, that, that we would stand in awe of God when we are in church. I pray, Father, that by our countenance, by our actions, that we might be a witness to those that are watching, that they would recognize that we are standing in awe of God. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this lesson today, and thank you for the words written in Ecclesiastes. Uh, thank you for the wisdom of Solomon and your writings through him. Uh, Father, thank you for your son Jesus, and thank you for the church that, that in this country that allows us to worship in freedom. Uh, Father, I just pray that when we go about our daily walk, that we would stand in awe of you, for you, Father, are in heaven. And what a privilege it is just to speak with you, just to be able to, without fear, approach your throne. Now, Father, we pray for those that are ill, that are uh, involved in financial or family problems. We pray your loving arms to surround them, your comfort to be with them. We pray, Father, for those that are in the hospital that you might be with the doctors and nurses that attend to them, that you might grant them an extra degree of wisdom. Uh, Father, we thank you for your word and pray that we would Listen to your message through it. And Father, we give you the praise and the glory and the honor. And we pray all these things in the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. God bless you.